Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. We've got an 01 LB7 Duramax. It's losing fuel prime when the truck sits. Uh, it's been getting worse. It used to be, you know, it'd sit two days, it would crank a little long. Now it's, it sits an hour and it cranks a little long. So let's get into the troubleshoot and repair of this problem. All right, so we got our HP tuners plugged in here. We're gonna use this for our data logging. This line right here, actual fuel pressure and desired fuel pressure. So I haven't cranked the truck yet. It's cold, it's been sitting overnight. We want 430 uh, bar, which is about 6,200 PSI. Right now it's got 10 or so bar, probably not even real. So <clears throat> let's give this a crank and see if we make any fuel pressure. Okay, now I look like a huge a-hole because it just started up totally fine. All right, so what do we learn here? It started fine and then it shut off, <clears throat> meaning that we had a slug of fuel leading towards the injection pump, but we had air following it in and now it shut off. So I think if I crank this again, we're gonna see that we have no fuel pressure. Okay, so as expected, no more fuel pressure available. Out under the hood here, behind the charge pipe, you got your filter head and you've got a primer on top of it. You push this, it's very soft. It should not be, right? When this is primed up, that thing should be pretty well rock hard. Behind it, you've got a fuel bleeder screw. All right, we're gonna loosen this screw. You can hear the air come out right there. I'll pump the primer a couple times. Now we have some fuel. So we were totally airlogged there. That's good. That's good to know and it's good to prove. The question is, how does that get airlogged? Why did this happen? And how do we fix it? So I pulled the upper engine cover off and the intake pipe off so we can kind of see what we're working with here. Now what I think is happening is I think somewhere between the CP3 high pressure injection pump and the rest of the truck, I think I have a small air leak. And if I had to guess, it's after I shut the truck off uh, because the engine is higher than the fuel tank, the fuel siphons back to the tank and we get a nice big slug of air in here. And then, you know, you go to start the truck, you've got a little bit of fuel sitting up against the injection pump. It sucks that down, boom, starts right up, and then all of a sudden, oh, we're airlocked. You have to prime it, and then it all comes back together. The interesting thing is, though, I don't have a fuel leak. So we have something that is allowing air to draw in, but not allowing fuel to come out. So that makes troubleshooting a little bit uh, more difficult, but I am hoping that we can find at least a wet connection or something that indicates uh, that we may have a leak there. Got my eyes on a suspect here. Very hard to see. If you look down there, that looks wet to me. And that hose looks in kind of crappy shape. And looking through the side here, I see wetness on the outside of the hose by the clamp as well. I can't get to any of this, but with the alternator off, I will be able to. I've pretty much inspected everything from the fuel tank all the way forward. Uh, so the fuel comes from the fuel tank up to these two hoses back here with these quick connects. This run metal lines through the valley, through a million piles of crap, up to the ficum, comes through the ficum, back out, that's just for cooling. Then it runs to the filter housing. This is the suction side of the filter housing. Primer, bleeder, and then comes back out of the filter housing. Running up to the front here, and then into the CP3 ultimately. Now also on this, there is a test port, or yeah, test port, bleeder port. Damn, thing's on there. There's this port, whatever you use this for. I don't actually use this port for anything. I don't find it that useful. I don't have an adapter for it. But anyway, there is flex hose, rubber flex hose on that as well that needs to be inspected. So uh, knowing that the whole bit of the truck looks good, up until this point, I'm gonna pull the belt off, pull the alternator off, and I think we're gonna find our leak under there. Had to pull the AC compressor off to get the alternator off. Now that we are down in here, 
can see that that shininess there is fuel residue it's not enough to drip there is fuel residue on it and then up here up here we have the same story there's fuel residue on that so I think my best bet is going to be pulling this out and replacing this piece of tubing and putting new clamps on it. It looks old. I changed a lot of this when I did head gaskets on this truck, but I did not change everything. But overall, this whole valley-like area here does appear to have some fuel residue on it. This is taken out. I have not touched this clamp, and I'm able to rotate this banjo fitting in the hose. So, while that's not good, that's a good sign that we may have our, our issue here. This hose is just, just beat, so I'm going to replace this. I'm surprised I actually let this slide, because uh, I remember I did replace so many hoses on this motor, but that's the way it goes. The one you don't replace is the one that ends up burning you. Luckily, this one is just you know a couple parts off the top of the engine to get to it. There's a couple hoses down in the valley. Uh, on the back of the CP3 that if those leak you're gonna have a really bad day so let's see if I have some hose in stock for this got a fresh piece of hose in here new crush washers on the Fickum didn't have the clamps I wish I had but I think these will do so now I want to well first clean out the whole system with some brake clean so it's all dry in there and then I'm gonna turn the key on just let my lift pump run for 30 minutes or so and that's going to put this whole system under like four four psi or so um with diesel and then we'll do a visual inspection for leaks again i think this is going to be it but if it's not we'll go deeper all right she's been running on the lift pump for about 40 minutes now you can see everything here is absolutely bone dry as intended so no obvious leaks there not that we had an obvious one before I'm gonna put the motor back together now, fire her up, make sure everything runs all right, and then we'll see if the problem has resolved itself. So one thing was this bleeder was super mushy. I mean, you'd push it, it just felt like a piece of junk. Um, now that this is all primed up, this thing is rock solid. You can move it a tiny bit if you want to, but you really can't move it much. So I think that's a good indication that we're holding prime here. Going to let the truck sit for a couple hours. We're going to make sure this is still hard, and then we're going to go give it a cold start, record it on HP tuners, and see how quick it builds fuel pressure. It's the morning, 12 hours later. Truck's sitting with the front end higher than the back, which is worst case scenario. So let's give this thing a crank and see how she does. So that's it folks just one little piece of hose like this can park one of these trucks or give you a whole mess of headaches um, this is a very easy one to fix easy one to find there are going to be times when it's trickier but i'm telling you this fuel system has to be absolutely airtight it's probably one of the bigger problems with these trucks is small air leaks can cause so many problems so anyway thanks for watching spank ranch garage you got a problem with your truck put it in the comments i'll help you fix it Talk to you next time. Quick fuel system function talk here, right? Here's how the fuel system works on these early Duramaxes. Starting from the fuel tank, you've got your suction line, it's half inch line. Comes out of the sending unit with half inch rubber hose, goes to metal, goes to rubber hose, goes to metal, uh, back to metal here. Now I have a lift pump signified here. These don't come stock. A lot of guys will put like an air dog lift pump here, but it's not absolutely required to. Anyway, so back by the brake booster is where the final rubber hose comes into the metal hose with that quick connect that I showed you earlier in the video. And that metal hose wraps around the valley of the engine up to this little piece of hose right here, which is what we found to be leaking. That's what goes into the Fickum which is, the, it uses fuel for cooling, so the fuel just passes through it. Fuel comes out the other side, goes to the filter unit, filter head, and then it comes back to the CP3, so it takes another rubber hose back to the CP3, 
And off of the CP3, there's another rubber hose, which goes back to a metal line to where this dot is. That's where the brake booster is. Back into rubber and metal hoses, all the way back to the end of the truck, through the fuel cooler, and back into the fuel tank. So you can see there's just so many transitions between metal and rubber hoses, and it's kind of just a very convoluted fueling system, especially for a truck that doesn't come with a lift pump that's mounted close to the tank. So... Your CP3 is creating that small amount of suction, and it's got to pull through the filter, the fickum, all these lines, all the way back to the tank. Now, what happens is, as soon as you have any breach, any way to get air into this system, nothing stops this from siphoning while the truck is turned off. So, what you have here, the CP3 is actually mounted lower in the valley, so this is a little misleading, but the other elevations are correct. We found that our leak was right here. So likely when we introduce air to this corner, we were allowing it to drain back to the truck this way. But what we were also allowing then is fuel to come back down through the ficum and the filter and head back through because we broke that vacuum because we have that air leak. So this little slug right here is where we'd have fuel leading up to the CP3 and we'd pretty much be empty from there back. So just fixing that little leak this whole thing stays prime now. I've parked the truck for a couple days, fires right up, no problem. But anyway, you could have leaks at any of these points. They all give you pretty much the same result, but there's clues you can pick up along the way to try to target um, exactly where your leak is. So that's how that goes.